Look at this, a big ball of bees called a swarm has just landed on this mango tree right here and you can see them all clustering together, forming a big clump. And what they're doing is actually looking for a new home. They're doing waggle dances, they're communicating, they're going and looking for a great spot to set up a new home. That's a perfect time for us to shake them into the box so we can have another hive. Now I'm gonna put my bee suit on to make sure I protect myself and my gloves on. Sometimes swarms can be grumpy, often they're not. You can sometimes do this with no bee suit on at all, but I just wanna make sure that I protect myself and limit myself from sting. So I'm gonna put a glove on this hand, a glove on the other, and we're just going to pick up a box which I've got prepared here to shake the swarm into. And it's really just a case of shaking that branch and shaking all the bees right into this box here. So up we go. And if we can get right under the swarm ball like this, then that's really quite an advantage. You can't always do that, but here we are, just able to drop the swarm into a box. And now I'm gonna shake it. So now we've got a lot of bees in our box. We're gonna take it over here and put the rest of the frames in. Look at that, beautiful. I think that was a really good swarm catch. We most likely got the queen in there and that means the rest will follow. I'm gonna set that up right here. And without further ado, we're just going to put the rest of the brood frames in like this, making sure they're pressed together in the middle and any excess space is on either side. That's a really good tip. And look at that, they're uh, all down inside the box. Have a look in here. Check out how many bees we've got right inside the box. We'll keep dropping these frames in nice and careful. And what we're going to do after we've got the last frame in is just put a lid on. After, as we were saying, pressing the frames together in the middle, just like that. Okay, now on goes the lid after I've swept in the remaining bees like that in case the queen is on the outside and just so we don't squash any as we get the lid on. There we go. And now we nestle that lid down like that, brush off any remaining bees and now we have a successful swarm catch. And right over here, we were just starting to harvest a bit of honey, which is exciting. There's a lot of honey coming in because it's the springtime, and that's why the bees are building up so much. There we have it, nice little new swarm. And while we're here, let's start another frame going, just by putting the key in, giving it a turn. And what that does is move the parts of our invention inside and start the process of harvesting honey directly from the hive and into your jar. If you look after the bees, you get this beautiful reward of honey. Isn't that just gorgeous? In a minute, it's going to be coming down the tube and into the jar. There, you can already see it. A beautiful light color showing the spring flavors. There's as many different flavors and colors of honey as there is flowers producing nectar in the world. This is an extraordinary thing to share that honey with your neighbors, with your friends, and bring the story of the bees to the table. Beautiful. And we better also cover up the honey if we're going to have a lot of bees around like this to make sure none of them start getting in our jar. Look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to have to taste that. I never get sick of watching the honey just flow directly out of the hive and into the jar. It looks like the bees are now marching in the front, which is perfect. So we've got another brand new hive to start just here. And if we look after them, they too will be producing honey probably in the next three or four weeks. <laughs>